Welcome back to another episode of Todo Tranquilo. Whoop, whoop, whoop. That, that last whoop, I feel like I my voice cracked. Uh, thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Uh, today, I'm very excited to finally, finally have Dan. Can you say your last name for me, Dan? Casby. Casby. I didn't want to butcher it. Even though, even though it's not, it's not that difficult. Yeah. Like Cosme, you know, it's, it, it's pretty simple to say. So you actually said it way better <clears throat> than, than how most people say it right there. You know why? Yeah. I, I think it's when, when people that are, that, you know, speak a different language and they know that some words are specific with accents. Yeah. They tend to say it with an accent purposely than saying it in English with an English accent. Well, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's like if I didn't if I didn't have that, I'd probably say like cause me. Yeah. And it's like you had just a, a little bit of twang, kind of like not a twang, but like a cause me. Yes. Yeah. Like <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But you know what I mean, right? I know exactly it's like getting at. It's pe- ca- people that do speak like a different language tend to say those foreign names. Yeah. In a specific way that they think exactly right so it's kind of like saying <clears throat> most people would say like pakistan right versus like pakistan pakistan right yeah. there's like that little like as you said <clears throat> accent and usually that comes like from either being like bilingual or kind of like just having friends of friends or just friends like in that from that region yeah or whatnot so definitely yeah but yeah, th- thank you. Thanks to everybody for tuning in to another episode of Todo Tranquilo. I'm very, very excited to have Dan Cosme today. Hey. Uh, <laughs> and like I told you before, we actually really started recording. I feel like <clears throat> like the like the the nervousness or like the nervous jitters are kind of like gone. Yeah. Um, like one thing that that t- tends to happen with me, it's like I'll breathe hard. It's like I can't catch my breath. Mm-hmm. But it's like it just. It feels better today because it's like I got my buddy, my buddy. It feels that way too, man. Honestly, it just feels like a <clears throat> very casual conversation minus the lights and camera, <laughs> obviously. But yeah. Yeah. I know you mentioned that because this is basically besides. This is basically your first time being on a podcast. Pretty right? much like officially. Like officially. Officially, officially. Yeah. Because you, you, you've been like on a, on a friend's podcast before. I think you told me a while ago. Way while back, but it was, but it was just like kind of like shooting the shit type of thing. Yeah, it wasn't like tell me about orange peel type of thing. Yeah, it was just straight up, just <laughs> like just, there wasn't an orange peel back then. So, like now there is. That was rude of me. Everybody, this is Darren Cosme, and he is the CEO and founder of Orange Peel, the brand that you and me both love. The brand that is. Going to be a household name soon. I can see it. One day. <clears throat> One day and it's not that far. Hopefully, right? Hopefully. We all like to just... We all like to hope that our hard work pays off and it'll get us somewhere. But y- you work extra hard, so I know it will. Thank you. You're welcome. And and thank you for the coffees. Dude. They misspelled your name, but... It's okay. Where is mean, this from? It, it was just from a uh, cafe in all the way from Chantilly. Cause you you asked for a vanilla latte. I'm like, let me do you one better. This is really good. Yeah, it's uh it's I was actually gonna ask you prior to the lights and recording and everything, <laughs> like yo, how's the coffee? Like, how's just let me know. I je- the, well <clears throat> just I like to I like to save the liquids for like on the podcast. Right. Unless I'm like actively drinking and I'm drinking off off air and on air. Yeah. <clears throat> I like to just save the uh, the liquids, you mm. know. So that is a <laughs> Devant uh, latte, or it's like one of the, like, their specialty drinks, oh. right? So I don't know when I had it the first time. Like this is immaculate. No, it's it's very delicious. It's it's super smooth. You taste the cough. So the the thing with vanilla lattes mm. is you either have one or the other, and it's never like balanced. It's either super sweet or it's extremely bitter and basically tastes like you're drinking black coffee. Right. Which, nothing against any black coffee drinkers out there. 
and nothing against black coffee itself because I do enjoy a black nice black coffee myself. It just depends on the time of the day, the specific day. So, but when I when I ask for a vanilla latte, it's like I'm expect I have a there's a certain bar that has to be met, right? And it's not too high, mm. but it's like. You know it's bad when when my bar is so low and it's not the best. It's like I know that it's really bad. I mean, at the end of the day, <clears> it's all subjective. Um, You're for right. Me, for yeah. me, for me at least, like when I when I look at a vanilla latte or any sort of like sweetened latte, I can't have it like uber sweet. Yeah, because it just throws me off, and I just feel like I'm I'm gonna get a sugar high, and I'm gonna crash right afterwards. <laughs> right. I mean, it's good for like right before bed. Because, like, some restaurants will actually, like, offer that kind of stuff. Yeah. Where it's, like, after your meal, they ask you, do you want any desserts? Or yeah. they offer coffee or a latte. Right. Yeah, so, like, the way I start my days off, like, if I'm actually going to have, like, a drink or, like, a coffee or a tea, I try to keep it as bitter as possible. So you're speaking to a a, uh, a black coffee type of guy. <laughs> so not that there's anything wrong with it. No, yeah, there's nothing wrong with black coffee drinkers. Not at nothing all. Nothing wrong. But your beans have to be amazing. Like I think so, because because be there's a difference between just having the coffee super strong and bitter, and having a coffee that's super strong, a little bit better, but it has it has a taste, right? You know, it's not just oh, it's just black, it's right. You know, oh, you yeah, know exactly like, what I mean. Yeah, like put some hair in your chest, really, <laughs> type thing. What do you mean you want creamer in your coffee? What yeah. is that? What do you mean sugar? Yeah, like sugar. It's like, really good though. Oh, it's it's <laughs> great. Dude, I'm probably gonna kill it before we go into the second like segment of the podcast. You know, I, I had a feeling, I had a feeling that that you would. I, I just didn't want to make. I just wanted to make sure that like you actually at least liked it. Otherwise, <laughs> would have brought like a second coffee. Oh no, 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 you're good. Yeah, that's solid. That's solid right there. Yeah. Because after I could just grab like some water, not too much. Absolutely, just kind of like <laughs> wash it down. No, dude, like. but uh, I guess in, introduce yourself the way you would introduce yourself to other people on the street oh I'm, i usually just go by dan like my full name is like <laughs> don y'all cosme whatever but like it's um i just go by dan dude it's it's been very simple like, yeah just straightforward <laughs> like there's no like confusion whatever it's, it's very yeah. just straight to the point well <clears throat> and i guess i guess part of it is because yeah you have a clothing brand but it you don't what's the way to say it's like it's not you don't make it you so yes so i think i think the way you're trying to describe it is like i don't wear it on my my sleeve rather like i don't like oh i'm dan by the way i i i run a clothing brand <laughs> yes. and you know i, I do blah blah, blah 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 i just go off like a whole like list of pedigrees of like everything yeah. that i've done it's like gotta that, that, that just comes which I, off as arrogant and pompous <laughs> yeah which i actually not thinking like i don't think there's necessarily uh, people that own clothing brands that do that, and unless they're in like a networking setting, possibly, right. and even then, you can't necessarily throw it like that. Yeah, to me, it it feels it feels like like I'll give you an analogy, right? Like, say if like I was vegan, right? I cannot go thirty seconds without <laughs> mentioning I'm vegan, yeah. and then all of a sudden the conversation just flows around. Well, why are you vegan? Uh, why don't you eat meat? Like, oh, it's because it's unethical and, you know, animal spirituality, da, 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 this and that. Like, where do we draw the line between, like, uh, pets and, you know, food? Yeah, that always be, seems to be the conversation when you get into that. It, it, it just, it's just a very, just, <laughs> but, like, roundabout conversation. So I see what you mean, though. It's like, I if, like, you're meeting somebody, you don't want it to be, you, you don't want the conversation to be around what you what you do. Right, but rather I I like the conversation to be around like character and get to know me as a person. Right, yeah, because I feel like if if we can gel as two people as, as a person, then you know I don't have to put on this this bravado or like this this uh, veil that I am this blah 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 or whatever. <laughs> you don't want to put yourself on a pedestal, right? And then come come off as pompous, right? I, I that's why I, <clears throat> I do I do respect the way you are, but again, like thinking but thinking about it, I don't I don't think there's too many people that do introduce themselves like, hey, my name is so and so, and this is my brand. I mean, 
I guess like a proper introduction would be like, I'm Dan. I'm the owner of Orange Peel. Um, we got some cool stuff coming out. There's yeah, coming there here. you go. I, I'm, I'm not trying to like, you know, <laughs> shove like product down your throat. You know, I'm not. It's more so like Orange Peel is more so like about rather what I want to put into Orange Peel is like more so like the community building aspect of it. Yeah. And really just tailoring around like a, a few sets of ideologies that people really vibe with and can gravitate and galvanize towards. Right. I want this to be like a lightning rod for for people that resonate with our message. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Well, I I, mean, <clears throat> I like the, the the person that you are. You're like, and I think I told you this. I think I told you this last time we had coffee. But it's just like the way you operate is I wish I operated like that. Mm. Obviously, we have our differences, you know, because I don't you don't drink alcohol at all, right? No. Yeah. So I drink like that's like obvious like differences, yeah. but differences in the in the in the aspect of like you read books, you know, you you'll read certain passages, maybe in specific vlogs, blogs and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I wish I did that. I wish I could spend a good 30 to an hour on a book and and read and like really go into it mm. and it's not it's not like my imagine like my imagination is not there whether it's you know things like that but it's just i don't think i have adhd but i just can't i can't do that it's and it's not that it's boring because i i can enjoy a good book but it has to be an audiobook right. i can't sit there and read it's too it's too vanilla for me Right. I, I hear what you're saying. I, I think part of it is also like you haven't found like the right book yet. Right. Like, like there's certain books that just like grab you after like the first passage, like the first couple of pages. And it's like, whoa, what's going to happen next? And, you know, it's, it just drives your imagination because like there, there's certain things that like audiobooks can can't do that like just reading a book does and i feel like reading a book more so stimulates your imagination unless the audiobook is like really tailored to like just like using like wide like a wide vocabulary that actually truly paints a picture mm -hmm. right okay. there, there's certain there's certain audiobooks that do that um one of them i feel like is can't hurt me david goggins like i think he does a very good job like painting i know yeah i told you that that yeah. that book for me and um Shout out to Isaac if you're watching. Shout out to you. M my buddy Isaac, he, <clears throat> this was, I first met him, right? Yeah. And I met him at my friend Jesse's. They were having kind of like a, what was it? It, it was kind of like a party because they were getting married. Mm. It was like a pre-party type of thing. And there were people that were coming that came, you know, from his job, personal life. And I met a bunch of people. And Jesse's just been, he's been such a huge supporter for me. I love him to death. And, like, <clears throat> you know me, and I don't, the same way you operate with your brand is the same way I operate with my podcast. I'm not, hey, my name's Jonas, I have a podcast. It's like, I, I don't even bring it up. If if I don't have to, I will not even bring up that fact that I have a podcast. And People people will take advantage of that, like, yo, I, I, I want to boost my business. I, I want to, like, do this and that. I, yeah. I, I want to get on a podcast. I be <laughs> it serious. just, it makes me nervous. Yeah. So he, yelled, like, yelled out. He was like, yeah, my friend Jonas has a podcast. I said, I said, started talking to me, and that's how I met him. And he told me about the book. And he's like, trust me, you'll love it. And mm. if you're not a reader, then definitely, you know, listen to it on audiobook. And the way they have it structured, it, I think, works for that specific book. And it was just amazing. Like, that that book really like kind of opens your eyes mm. to the certain person that thought David Goggins is, but there's other people like him, maybe not to that extremity, mm -hmm. but there's definitely people like him where it's like, yeah, making life progress every second of the day type of thing. Do yeah. you think that like you give me that feeling, but maybe you don't operate it, like I said, operate in that extremity. I'm 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 flattered that I get that <laughs> that uh that I guess that feeling. I'm very flattered. You don't think so? No, I mean I, I always the grass sometimes seems green on the other side, right? Like I always I see the flaws rather than the the holes in 
in my schedule rather like things that I want to do because I want to do everything and anything under the sun, right? I want to live like a million lifetimes and just like try to experience it all, right? But realistically, that's not, I'm not saying that's not a reality, but it's one of these things like you need to be more so grounded with how you actually approach everything because you can't like, you can't put all like, one egg here, one egg there, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> like you can't put all your efforts in everything because then you, that's how you get burned out. Yeah. And I, I oftentimes find myself in those kind of situations too. And so it's kind of like just kind of prior all this going on was like, we're talking about how like you just got to dial back sometimes and just like really just focus on like one to two to three things, right? And then everything sort of like comes together. And part of that's like the power of saying no. Yeah. You told me that. And some of it is also just like, like you'll catch yourself in a slump and you're just sick and tired of just everything. But then you start becoming sick and tired of being sick and tired. Right. And um, that that's the thing when you start to have like that, that switch in, in your head, like I am feel like I'm destined for more or like I feel like I can do so much more with what, what it is I got going on. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I like that. See what I mean? It's just like the things you say, the things that come out of your mouth are just like T's are I's are dotted and T's are crossed type of like that's the, like the way you speak, the way mm. you like carry yourself. It's just very punctual. Mm. I, I, I'm trying to co- perhaps maybe. not professional because you're not you can you're ca- you're super casual. But I think you just you have an, a certain esque to yourself that it seems very punctual. I definitely wouldn't say professional. Not that you aren't professional. Mm. It's just like professional. I think when somebody's like that and they're very professional, they're not even necess- You can't feel comfortable around them because then you feel like you have to be a certain way. Absolutely. I've I've been. I know exactly what you're getting at. So I think you're definitely touching on a good point here. Like when people are too professional, or people like too clean cut and just um just polished yeah all around right like you just feel very uneasy like this person's a little too <laughs> perfect right like this gives me like like christian bale like american psycho <laughs> literally vibes. yeah like this guy would wake up in the morning do like 50 push-ups like 100 <laughs> sit-ups like sit in like an ice mask and this and that and just like you know, just be on some like, over over analyzing every single detail, every single little detail, like from everything like to the to the morning routine to like the business cards. Oh and- man, that that's my favorite scene though. That business card scene is my favorite. I think it's my favorite because, like, I I wish I was. I wish I carried myself to a certain point like yourself. Um. And I, I can do it sometimes, but I can't do it all the time. Mm. So, for example, you know, just having everything set up today, like I had to set everything up while you were here. Normally, if if I was punctual, right, I would have been just sitting here waiting for you. <laughs> like, oh, sit down, take, get the mic, you know. It, <clears throat> and I guess that's what I, that's the way I see you is just super organized Mm. punctual Mm -hmm. clean cut but not to the level of people can't be themselves around you right like they can't be their genuine selves around you Mm. and that's why it's like i i can i'm a person that i'm very if it's a one-on-one type of thing i can be either (laughs) super fragrant or it's just like Mm. like sassy or like thing like something like that it's like and under, if I was with, next to a like super professional person that just is like that, I wouldn't be able to do that. And it's like with you, like it's just you have that, but it's still you provide a comfort. Appreciate that. So, <clears throat> and I, it, yeah, like I said, I always felt that. Like, <clears throat> I just like the way you you run your life. <laughs> Thank you. I like the way you manage your life. Appreciate it. Dude. <laughs> Um, but I mean, if it's any constellation, I was here like seven minutes late and bless the fact that you were setting up actually put me at ease too. Cause like, I thought like, Oh my God, Oh my God, I'm running behind. Like dude, <laughs> he's going like, to cancel on he's me. He's going to cancel on me. Like w- w- what kind of impression does he even leave? Like, like he's no. just doing all this. He's doing all this for me. Like to actually be on his podcast. Would you, would you actually think I'd cancel on you? Um, 
I feel like we've we've said I I think I think more so disgruntled uh, than than canceled. I'd say you we wouldn't if I was like an hour late. Obviously, like, <laughs> I don't. On. You know, even then, I'm just such a such a like go with the flow person. Then it wouldn't have even phased me. Right. If anything, it would have made me. It would have made me at ease knowing that you were an hour late, considering that I kind of had to rush yeah. on my end, like behind the scenes. So I just I would have been like, thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, but <clears throat> we we've we've had conversations, but I think like you have yet to see the not that you haven't seen the real me, but in the in the sense of like I'm a super, super easygoing person where it's mm-hmm. like I, I just go with the flow. Right. Sometimes I do like to be super punctual. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Like Right. I'm the type of person where it's like, uh, life's too short to be too serious all the time. Make sense? Yeah. It's like, but there, but there, it's a time and place for everything type of thing. Well, absolutely. It's very contextual. I'd say like, as you say, time and place for everything. Exactly. But, um, yeah, look at us just conversation flowing. But I knew I knew this was going to happen just based off that last time we had coffee because we were just talking and talking and talking. Yeah. We literally could have been there all fucking day, like all day, dude. Just, Absolutely, dude. It was <clears throat> and I was uh, like I said, I'm glad we went out for coffee. It wasn't it wasn't a precursor for the podcast. We just did it because we just wanted to do it. Dude, just wanted to shoot the shit, man. Yeah. I'm honest to God, it was just like yeah. one of those things. Like, let's just catch up as friends. It wasn't like, oh, let me put you in your. Which was nice, honestly. I I love that. I and I always say this. Jen makes fun of me for it because, like, I that it's like my favorite word. But the or the way everything happened was organic. Mm-hmm. Like at first, like the way it, it led at, led up to this, it was organic. You know, we we met at Euphoria. We had that panel. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Euphoria. Shout out Fab, um, Francisco. <laughs> shout out, go. shout out to them though, because uh, they brought me on. I don't think I if I didn't if they didn't bring me on and I didn't do that panel, I wouldn't have never met you. Honest to God, I don't think and, unless it was already written right in the stars, if you will. I don't think I would have met you, but we met. <clears throat> and when I first met you, I knew the type of person you were, mm. but I couldn't gauge on I couldn't gauge the comfort level at that point because it was just so so quick. Dude, it was chaotic. That <laughs> Euphoria is a very chaotic event to vend at, man. It's it's good. It's good for. It's, it's a good chaotic though. It's a good chaotic, but your mind is everywhere. Like, dude, <laughs> like, because sometimes you you'll catch you sometimes like there's like a group chat that goes on in Euphoria with all the vendors, and there's like oh, there's some person like stealing this and that da da da. da. And like, yeah, they'll, they'll have like snapshots of somebody's face or whatever. And like, it's kind of like circulating around. I'm like, dude, is somebody trying to do that thing to my, my, uh, my booth? Yeah. Cause usually when I, when I roll into Euphoria, it's sometimes it's just me. Yeah. Right. I've so noticed. like, it's, um, it's one of these things like, it's just like, if it's just me, it's tough to like, just leave the booth. Like even to even go to the back, yeah, like let alone even do a panel. Yeah. Somebody's going to take my shit while I'm not looking. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, um, I actually had <laughs> had great help that that time around with my cousin. So yeah, shout out to her. Shout out, cousin. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we 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 talked a little bit on there. We actually haven't even talked about the brand at all, which is fine. We'll talk about that on the second part. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was nice to meet you. And then you know we did some other stuff. Uh, after that, you know we we shot the. Uh, well, I'm drawing a blank here. You're talking about the, the Leche Collab magazine. The Leche Collab. Uh, uh, what do you call the? <laughs> why am I drawing a blank here? Oh, you're talking about the promo, the, the, like the promo, video promo. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was like, why can't I think of that word right now? But yeah, when we shot that uh, promo, Leche Orange Peel Collab, like that was nice. Um, and we talked a little bit, but I think like what really solidified our friendship and really set the found, like the foundation was there. Yeah. But what really solidified it was the fact that we went out for coffee and it wasn't awkward. It wasn't weird. Yeah. Because, like, we could have gone out to coffee and it would have been, it could have been, it could have been really weird or super, like, awkward. It's right. like, yeah, so what's up, man? Like, you know what and I, I mean? It's just, just like, like twiddling my thumbs. Like, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> I don't need to it, dude, exactly. But that's what I mean. It's just like, 
<clears throat> every everything does happen for a reason, and the way it happened for us solidified it. So that's why when when uh, you know, because I always I always plan to have you on the podcast. Mm. I was like, this is somebody I really want to pick their brain, just have you know, shoot the shit on the podcast. But luckily, we did it off the podcast, and you know, just made everything better. Mm. Made everything better, and yeah, now you're more than just an acquaintance, which is dope. Dude, it's it's pretty, it's pretty <clears throat> cool as well. I, I the feelings very mutual. <laughs> That's great, dude. That's great. I, I I'm glad when I can make a good impression on somebody to the point where it's like they're more than just an acquaintance, right? You know, it's like I feel like I did good for myself. I, I agree, dude. I think also like I think. I don't think you give yourself enough roses. Like you actually know how to actually make and also like vet like people as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, we, we talked, we talked during our coffee break, we kind of spoke about previous people that we encountered on our road of creativeness. Right. <laughs> you know, you, you, you hope to, who no matter who you meet down the line in this road, they're genuine but sometimes it's not always that. It's not always so. <clears throat> people in in kind of like when when we're in that space, mm -hmm. it's it it can be sometimes difficult to read a person until it's kind of like you're already in the deep end with them, and it's like ooh, hey, <laughs> ooh, what brother, is, ooh. What is this, hey. <laughs> brother, ooh, it's just gross and nasty. It's like, oh god, this is not what I what envisioned. I envisioned. <laughs> We're in sync, dude. There you go. <laughs> no, but this is great, dude. Um, before, let's see, what's up? Yeah, okay, yeah. So before we go on the break, I definitely, 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 a hundred percent want to talk about the Japan trip you recently took, man. Dude, it was, it was magical. I say like, this, this is my <laughs> this is my second time in Japan. So my my thing is that I'm. I'm 6'3", right? And the thing is, when you roll into a, a place like Japan that has predominantly, like, shorter people, um, you're not... You're going to have a very, very challenging time finding clothing that fits you, right? No, I'm, I'm, I'm very serious. Like, it's, No, I didn't even think about that. It, so, so the story, story is I'm there with my friend Faraz, and we're basically just tra traversing through Tokyo and Osaka, right? In between, like, going through the Shinkansen. The Shinkansen is basically like a, a bullet train. That takes you from one city to another and it is like first class like there's like a tray that comes down you actually have like leg room to like stretch out even for myself right wow and there's like uh there's like shelving up top where you put like your your bigger suitcases and stuff like that they have like a little coat rack on the side right next to the window um it's it's a pretty pretty fun time like you can Sick. buy you can even buy like bento boxes like with sushi and like you know karage and all this other stuff there um it's Japan's a beautiful place, uh, but recently it, it's get, it's kind of giving me like New York vibes, uh, like in a sense that like there's just so many tourists now. Oh, and there was like last year and the year but before. It's, it's not dirty, right? No, 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 no. Japan, and it just Japan's very big. I big guess place. in in the aspect of like uh, clutter, it's like New York. Like just by looking at pictures, I could see how it. That could feel like New York, but I feel like it's completely, you know, because it's, it seems like an organized chaos. Organized chaos is one way to describe it. I'd say there's like a, a crazy amount of like pop, there's this crazy amount of people there in general, right? Like there's just so much like flow and traffic and everything going on there. It's, uh, it's tough to like just capture a moment, just like, just to take it all in. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but Going going from that standpoint, like this this year was like because the year prior I was like just scoping out spots with my other friend Al Bors, and he was stationed there as like a as a person in the military, right? <laughs> and I'm not going to go into ranks, yeah, no. <laughs> but uh, pretty much like we backpacked like from Iwakuni all the way up to Tokyo, like from south to north, right? And kind of like just ex getting little experiences here and there. Like traveling with him was like very cool. It was one of these things like where you're just like, you're really like, tr like really submersed into like the Japanese culture. Yeah, there's like the more like touristy things, like visiting the temples and you know certain museums and whatever. But then there's like just actually like being in those like little alleyways and like being like actually like submersed into like 
pure Japanese culture. Well, more so Japanese culture that they allow you to have. But yeah. More so like you were a local, not necessarily a tourist. Exactly. That's it. it on the way, you pick up a bit of Japanese too, like just to get by. Yeah, um, definitely. You, you kind of have to. That way at least show at least a bit of um, courtesy to, to where you're at. Where it's like I'm trying. Yeah. And, and I'm not just here just to rob you of your culture right. type of thing. And so that's exactly. And so fast forwarding to this year, right? Um, I actually, I had a friend of a friend who lives in Japan who actually also models there too. And I, I ended up reaching out to her and she pretty much reached out to her network and we ended up getting like a, a shoot going. Yeah, I, dude, the yeah. shoot came out amazing. Phenomenal. It was, it was, I, I mean... I told you I was I was gonna be on the lookout for it because yeah. I was extremely excited to just see what you did out there because that's crazy because it I think when you can bring your work with you in this it, but like because obviously this is work right what we do outside of actual work yeah like it's still technically work but we like it so but yeah. I guess when you can bring your work slash hobby with you somewhere into a completely different country mm-hmm. and see. The outcome of it, it's just, I, I can imagine it was rewarding for you to just see the final product. Dude, I remember I was in, um, I remember when I saw like the, the final, pro- like I, I was doing most of the videography, like for that, for that shoot, right? And it was very just like running gun type of like <laughs> shooting. I just I basically like went through like my Instagram, like save posts, like, okay, what am I, what am I looking to shoot here? Like, how am I going to use this like gimbal? You know, how am I going to use like my, I'm just like, basically going through everything that like my, my videographer here, shout out to Kevin, like would go through. Right. And so I'm trying to like bring up like my best impression of him and try to actually like do what he does. I can't do what he does, but, <laughs> um, but you know, find the, do the bare minimum that you could, the bare minimum that I could, right. Just so honestly, sometimes less is more. Right. And a hundred percent. Like just when I was in South Korea, Itaewon, when, I actually got like the photos, at least the first round of photos back. And I remember exactly where I was. I was like, I was like on that, uh, like bar strip or whatever. And I was there with Faraz and I'm just sitting, there's like, everyone's like fucking going ham, like partying, there's drinks, all this and that. Like there's loud music blaring. And here I am like a dork <laughs> like just on my phone, like, just like, like draw a drop, like yeah. going through everything. And and he's like, yo, dude, what's going on? Like, like we're, we're <laughs> he's over probably thinking like you just got told some major news. That's like, yeah, no, and like because like we, we were in a bar crawl uh, group and um, like obviously I made some friends in the, and that we made some friends in that group and they're all like, dude, what's what's Dan doing? <laughs> Why, why is he on his phone? Like, is he is, he, check, is he checking the stocks? Is he is he just trying to talk to a girl? Like, what? I could I could see that. Like, that's something I would be like, hey, Dan, come, dude. Oh, uh, bro, yeah. dude, it's like 50, 53 degrees Fahrenheit tomorrow. <laughs> that that's interesting news, right? The weather yeah. app, right? The we- dude, the weather tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll we'll resume the J- the Japan trip because I we definitely that wasn't enough to we barely scratched the surface. Barely. I think. But uh, we'll be right back. It's the way that that power tool is like positioned over there. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I, this is the last thing I'm going to say. I didn't even. It's just it. like the way the way it's there. It just it, it feels like a piece of like art. You know, it, it feels like it actually like is. Like it's meant to be there. Yeah. I want you to see my power tools. Like it's such an it's such an effortless like like piece. You know, I don't even want to say it's, it actually actual has like utility and Especially use. Especially in between, in between the other things. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's just I, I don't know. I just have like an eye for that kind of thing. It's like that's something just so off. Like I, and then I notice it, and it's like that is so cool. Maybe I'll just keep it there now. Every time. I, I think you should, dude. Especially like just your <laughs> aesthetic of your like your room, and then I see that red like power drill, <laughs> and it's like whoa. Is that Supreme? That, is that a Supreme? Is that Supreme? <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> we took like a, what a bathroom break, I guess you'd say. Got ourselves some more refreshments. Shout out Liquid Death. What do you think of it? It's not bad. Honestly. It's, it's I like I said, it's it's um 
Yeah, it's like guys, it's it's an on Ar- on Ar- Arnold Jesus Christ, Arnold Palmer. It's their version of Arnold 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 Palmer. <laughs> it's their version of it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it. I like it because it's not so sweet. Yeah, I mean, and I, their cans look awesome. The branding team at Liquid Death fucking went off. Are we sponsored by them? Or rather, are you sponsored by them? <laughs> I'm not sponsored, but, you know. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to hold it right there then. <laughs> you, 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 may, you may in the future get, get a Liquid Death sponsorship, and I don't want if, this, like, if I back. <laughs> If I ever did, if, if I did this long enough to get a Liquid Death sponsor, that'd be... That's when I would know I made it. It's a milestone. That would be 100% because I, I like their stuff. Right. Like, I genuinely. <laughs> is there is there like any sort of like sponsorship that you would turn down, though? Turn down? Like at, least in, at least in the uh, beverage department. In the beverages. Something I would turn down. Like, it just completely goes against your ethics. Oh. <laughs> I don't do enough research on these brands uh. to, to, to have a general consensus on why I wouldn't go with them. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, oh no, I, I would never do cuz of cuz of the way they produce their their drink. Yeah. I just I don't do enough research on that aspect. Okay. But yeah, I can't really think of one. If if I ever turn down something, it's because I genuinely don't drink it or I think it's nasty. Right. Like if I if I ever did for some for some reason, if like you know a drink came and it's like hey we want to sponsor you and we want to sponsor your podcast, I would have to taste the drink and I like I would have to like the drink. Right. I can't like I can't pretend to drink something and be like oh it's so good. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 And there's like tears like going down your face like this is so good. This is so good. <laughs> oh my god. But um. Japan, Japan. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. See that—that's what happens though when you when you do a podcast with a with a friend, with a buddy, somebody you feel comfortable with, because you tend to go off the rails and you're just talking about some random shit. Oh my god, dude! Like it just goes like <laughs> it just like ricochets from like one topic to another. Yeah, and you never really get actually like properly, you never like, you never even get to the end of the topic. Right, you just switch from one topic to another topic. Yeah, but um, <laughs> before we do that again, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Jap- Japan trip, Japan trip. Yep. Um, you got the pictures while you were doing a bar crawl. Yeah, a bar crawl on Ite One. I'm just sitting there like a dork on his phone. Meanwhile, everyone's like just living it up like it's 1999. And uh, I'm just sitting there like, oh my God, these photos are like amazing. Amazing. Like, good God. Because it's one of these things like where like the very first half of that trip, or rather like the first quarter of that trip, I was just so focused on like getting the shoot because like there there's like a huge there, there there's a few obstacles in your way. One of them even being like a language barrier, right? Let alone even like getting the right places and all this other stuff like set up. But dude, shout out to Tepe, dude. That that dude is great. He's he's the he's the photographer that kind of like facilitated all of this. He got his whole crew, um, stylist, makeup artist. You said um, Tepe. 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 Was he was he the friend that the, that you knew from that lived in Japan or no 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 so the friend the friend that that I, the friend of the friend that lived in Japan her name's Risa she's a model there and like she she has like she she's been there for quite some time right and shout out Risa shout out Risa um <laughs> dude like just she has like a, her whole network there right and like she does so many different things I was actually like blown back I'm like wow like dude she's so like just involved in so many different aspects. Like she's it's not just like a streamer, but also a model, and also like was like going to like college, doing this and that, right? And um, yeah, she's like, yeah, I, there, there's she sent me like a whole list of like photographers that um, that she's either worked with or wanted to work with, right? And it, it was one of these things like I started like reaching out, like she she also helped me reach out to them too, and we we yeah, dude, she's <clears throat> she's awesome, and we eventually landed on. Tepe, right? And he has like his whole crew. And the thing is that what I like about Tepe's like uh vision is that it's very similar to like the photographer I, uh, I use here. Shout out to Roy. Um, you know, it's they're relatively like similar. And it's like there's not it's not too like off the beaten path, right? It's not so experimental that mm-hmm. like I, I would be very uncomfortable trying this out. Well, th- I was gonna say that because of the person you are, I'm surprised you even took 
um, sort of that leap of faith into trusting a, a different photographer that you usually choose. Because <clears throat> um, we, we talk about it, like, for example, with your videos, you only use Kevin, really. Yeah. You know, so a shout out, Kevin. <laughs> he's our, he's our, K, K trust, Park, dude. K Park Productions. Good friend, also. Great friend. Um, but yeah, you, knowing the type of person you are, I can already see that you were probably like literally on eggshells, just like, oh, I have to use somebody. I have to entrust my vision to a complete stranger that. You know, and no, <clears throat> no shot to them. Obviously, like it's not that you're not capable. It's just when you're used to you working with somebody, right? For so long, you have a kind of like telepathy, where it's like you know what the other person's looking for. Well, absolutely, yeah. Like the, the, there's there's a there's a formula that you've created and used time and time again to get the results that the desired results, rather, right? Exactly. And so when you actually take out like one variable and sort of like place another one there like a very like wildcat type of uh variable you don't know what you're gonna get yeah right not only am i don't know the photographer but i also have to be the videographer too and it's like there's just like i'm basically working with i don't want to say like strangers but definitely people that i'm that i'm not familiar with but <clears throat> because because of our mutual friends with risa i trust her right so it's, it's kind of like one of those things like I'm going to take this leap of faith. And it's also part of like entrepreneurship and actually taking risks, right? You have to take, you have to take these kind of things to really get results, right? 100%. Rather, cause like if you're constantly repeating uh, the same thing over and over and over again, you're not getting results, right? It's, it's one of these things like, well, you're, I want to say you're not insane, but rather it's just like, <laughs> it's, you're not getting to where you need to go because you're not stepping out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. right i can see that where it's um because yeah no i can i can see that sometimes you know if you do something over and over again that uh it's like a consistent formula yeah it, down the road it's like obviously you know if it's not broke don't fix it but right if it's if you, you you're probably not going to get any new engagement from it kind of sort of but exactly I, I see what you mean though where Either way for you, kind of in that in that situation, it was either a win, it was a win win because either maybe it won't be the same way I'm used to, but it'll be something different that I could showcase. Very. So it 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 was a win win situation regardless, I think, but because you are a person that crosses their t's, dots their eyes, read it through two three times over. Right. I, I can see that you were probably like you know. A little bit inside of you is trying to keep yourself composed, like just trust the process. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the pictures uh, came out amazing, and we just saw the video, and the video, <laughs> the video is great. The video is great. Thank we, you. Um, so I think you did a great, great. You know, whatever, <clears throat> whatever was created over there, the connections that you made. I think it it, it came. It was well worth it. So worth yeah. it. I say this because also like it's it's a way to actually like branch out out of like Northern Virginia and other DMV area and actually like test the waters in rather in international territory. Right. And so it's, it's kind of one of these things like, well, <laughs> yeah. how does Japan receive this? Right. Um, or rather like that, that like circle. Right? Did you ask any of the models like what they thought? I mean, the models were like friends. So like oh. they're, they're, it, it's, it's kind of like I feel like it comes like from a biased standpoint like oh, yeah, yeah the clothes are great this and that um i asked i asked for the i guess the the team that i that i don't know like what do you think about these clothes they're like yeah it's good because like they're they're more so used to like very high-end like fashion like very contemporary style yeah. stuff right um very like experimental things like i've seen their portfolios i'm like Dude, this is this is intimidating <laughs> like my stuff isn't here yet yeah i don't know nor do i don't even know if i want to go with this of uh, these put orange peel in that trajectory right um and so when they when they see like a simple like t-shirt or two and then like a hoodie it's like this is easy this is what this is <clears throat> this is okay this is whatever yeah because I, I see the way like they they dress up in style i'm like oh god dude yeah because you saw you saw the portfolio probably 
Yo, they're, they're, they're some crazy, crazy runaway shoots or something. <laughs> very, I'd say, like very, like Vogue, like s, like very, like um, Rick Owens. Uh, Rick Owens is definitely like that. That that's like a way to encapsulate like their like vision and their like like what they go for in terms of like content creation. That's awesome though. Yeah, because it was probably nice for them where it was um to try something new. Uh, I agree. Yeah, because like I I like to have like people who have that that type of who are like enthralled like in that like realm of like fashion and kind of like bring them to like something a little more simplistic and just see the way something they, more comfortable comfortable for for at least the audience right, but more so like something a little more casual than what is traditionally seen on runways, right? And it's it's very cool, like, to see people from, like, unconventional uh, lines and actually, like, bring them in and make, try, have them do something of this nature, right? Yeah. And so it, it's very, it's very cool to see what they, they come up with and do. It's sometimes it's better than what is traditionally done in this realm. Like, people who are so, like, used to like tees and hoodies and hats and whatever and seeing what they they come what they bring to the to the game and just seeing the results of that is like whoa it, it really like takes you back like dude, there's so many different ways to really just like capture this like not only this product but rather like this lifestyle rather right so yeah. <laughs> sorry i want to let you talk but i feel like maybe you're running out of things no, 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 it's not that I'm running out of things. Like, there's, there's so much that could be said. I just don't know if I even have the vocabulary to, oh, like, listen, like really expand on it. <clears throat> I think you're doing a great job. I appreciate that. <laughs> One thing I did want to touch on, because I think it's, it's something that maybe a lot of people didn't know, because I didn't know until we talked. Oh, boy, you're making is, me nervous. <laughs> Um, and maybe it, I'll say it, but if you don't want to talk about it, we'll just cut it in post. Sure. <laughs> but, um, one thing that I don't think a lot of people know that I didn't know is you started off with socks. Yeah. Which <laughs> I can, <laughs> I think you think it's, it's like, um, I think it's, it's, it's fun to think, you know, Hey, I started from socks. Um, yeah. But like you said, you wanted to be something more than just right. socks. You didn't want to be a sock company. No. Um, but I just think it's it's interesting and it's fun in the fact of, hey, that's how you got to where you are now. Right. And I want you to kind of talk in depth. <clears throat> First of all, how the sock thing came about. Because okay. I don't think we talked about that, like why you even thought about making socks. Mm. Um, I want you to talk about how you did that. And I want you to talk about the transition because you obviously transitioned from just socks to more clothing pieces like hoodies, sweatshirts, right? hats. I think it was such a smooth transition to the point that when you say that, it's like, yeah, it was started from socks out. That's why I was so shocked because the, the, the transition that whenever you made that transition, the transition was so smooth that I, nobody would ever know. Right. Well, then again, like, I don't think anybody knew because I wasn't even that big at that time. So it's it's one of these things like you're just a very niche, like product slash brand mm -hmm. rather like you sell like these very funky socks. So then it's like, OK, let's let's try something different. Right. Um it's just getting a lot of like feedback like from the market right sometimes like you're and I, i'm, I'm going to touch on the origin in a second but like sometimes like what you think is like a great product and idea sometimes it's not received well by the mass market right so like sometimes like your your product tends to like hit like a very very niche market and it's a it's a niche market that you necessarily don't want to build off of right and so Tying back into it, right, like how how it came to socks was that in college, um, I was doing a lot of things. Like I was basically like doing club lacrosse. Um, I was basically like playing pickup and also like going like to different like orgs and meetings and stuff like that, right? So I always had like a pair of socks for everything, right? I had a pair of socks like for this and a pair of socks for that activity and X, Y, and Z, right? 
But like what I notice is that there's not identified like a, a gap in the market, at least for my my usage, right? Mm-hmm. And one of these things was that there are colorful socks, but they don't have the athletic uh, composure, rather like the, the athletic like utility of what an athletic sock has. But the athletic sock doesn't have the flair that a dress sock would necessarily. So, and I see the market out there and I didn't really notice anything that had what I was looking for, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you see the typical like guacamole and chips on a on a sock or like, you know, with something very quirky and very office friendly or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's like a way to like really just express yourself like in an office environment. Um, but I saw something where like, I don't really see like, stories and art pieces really like tailored towards like socks and I, I thought like that's where I can make that's where I can make my impact right I can actually create this brand off that um and so like when I started off I had like like 10 maybe 12 different like designs like for socks and I kind of narrowed it down to like four like after like asking like some close friends and family like yo what do you think about these designs they're like I mean, this is not our cup of tea, but like, shit, like <laughs> uh, we like we like these four different socks. What did what was the feedback you got within your inner circle? Um, Whether it be friends, family, when you <laughs> no, dude, when when you first start something like this, like dude, you're, you're gonna get you're gonna get some some not so flattering feedback, yeah. right? Like, dude, this is this is crazy, this is dumb, <laughs> like, dude, Sunk. this is this is silly, dude, like this is just like you you use your time and effort something better. I th- I think <clears throat> I think yes, it's silly when you when you think just surface level, Mm. like, yeah, it's silly. But I think, I mean, this ties back to just the person you are. Like I said, you're very cut and clean, but you, you still have, you have character still. Right. You know? And I think that just, that's a perfect example of the fact that, yeah, I'm, I'm very cut clean. I'm organized, but I do have character. I'm not just, I'm not just a walking schedule. Right. And the fact that you that was your thought process when you first came into this uh world of creating was the fact that you wanted to make socks. I think it's I think it's yeah. silly in the aspect of I think it's silly in the aspect of who it's coming from. Right. You know? Well, it's, it's not only that cuz like the person that you see before you today is is because of the mistakes that person made, well I made rather in this in this example, um, it's because like I, I basically just took a bet on myself and said like, dude, I can do this without knowing anything about retail or e-commerce or just <clears throat> anything of even how to sell a product in the first place, right? You can come up with like the most amazing product on the planet, but if you don't have an idea of even how to sell it mm-hmm. or who it's even, who it's even like going towards. Like the demographic. The demographic, right? It, that you're you're already in in a much bigger problem, than, yeah. Than what you started off with, right? And so I think that's a lot of a lot of people tend to like start brands, and they kind of live in this bubble, or start this business and live in this bubble of like, oh, it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be great. But then when when actually you have when you have your product or your service or whatever, next thing you know, it's like, why, why is nobody hitting my phone? How why, why is <laughs> yeah. no one why is no one like buying anything off the website? I'm like, dude, you didn't. <laughs> Why isn't my shit flying off the shelves right now? Right. <laughs> yeah. And so like that that's what that's what kind of happened to me. Like when I when I started this this brand, like you know, what what gives? What's going on? <laughs> what gives? <laughs> no, because like I, I, I basically came to this thinking I was going to not become an overnight millionaire, but rather I built a, an amazing product. I built um a product not only that is functional and util- utilitarian, right? But also has flair and it basically checks off all the boxes that you would possibly want in a sock, right? It keeps your feet cool while while it's hot outside and vice versa. Um, again, has that flair. It has that, um, that dynamic versatility of what you want in a sock and the thickness as well. So it's kind of like having like a, a second life in your shoe. But um, it's like, well, did you even do like any crowdsourcing or did you even like build your your audience up before before even like putting this out Mm -hmm. right and so that that's like where i made made my mistake is that i didn't i didn't know enough about actually like building an audience before like putting out a product 
right? And so it's one of these things like where sometimes like your first idea may not be your greatest, but you tend to make a pivot and, you know, something that actually resonates more with people, right? And so it takes, it takes a bit of like humbleness to kind of like accept that and actually like make those changes on, not on the dot, but rather like it takes, it takes time and like slow processing to really like just make that change. I 100% believe that though. Yeah. Cause it's, it's kind of, um, it's knowing how to take constructive criticism. You know, there's people that <clears throat> can't take constructive criticism for whatever reason it be. You know, they believe that their product is the best and it's like, no, nothing needs to change. And it's, you know, unfortunately those sometimes things like that, they don't go anywhere because they're not willing to, what's the, they're not willing to make those sacrifices without, and, and I feel like those types of people are very prideful because they believe it's like, no, it came from me. This is what I thought of. And that, that should work. It should be flying off the shelves any right. day now. There, there's, there's a sense of arrogance. There. Yeah. It's there's like people arrogance. just don't know about it yet, but once they do, right. It's, <clears throat> it's kind of with music, honestly, when you get a very arrogant, um, artist, the you know i i feel that when you get a very arrogant art music artist it tends to not go anywhere right because they're not trying to switch their flow up or try new sounds and it just stays stagnant and you have to be able to take that criticism you know take it with grace and i feel like maybe that's what you did it's and you you went into the <clears throat> now you know the t-shirt world the sweater with the sweatshirts and you're like, right. maybe I do need to do something more than just socks. Right. You know, not to say it was a bad idea or anything like that, but it was, you had to take a step back and reevaluate. I'll say this, like you're, you're bound to make mistakes when you actually start your brand. Right. And the thing is like, if you don't make those mistakes, you'll never learn. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you don't learn from those mistakes, you're bound to repeat those mistakes again. And so like necessarily this was, this was a good this is a good lesson rather I'd say like actually like do your research with the market, right? Like understand like what people want, what people are actually doing or rather create something that people generally resonate with. It doesn't have to be like the best product on the planet. My t-shirts are the best product or like the best t-shirts on the, on the market. I like to think so. Uh, I like <laughs> yeah. to think my hoodies are the best, but that, again, it's very subjective, right? Some mm -hmm. people, some people like things that are, you know, X and you like things that are Y, right? Uh, kind of like the whole coffee thing that we talk about, right? People have their preferences. Yeah. Um, everything's not, everything's kind of subjective to, to a point though. To a certain point, but like when, when 90, 90, 90, 90% of people like saying something and the other population saying like 10%, you know, it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, this is arguably better, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And so, where I'm, where I'm going with this is that like you ha you're going you're bound to make mistakes. Nobody has a perfect clean slate. Nobody starts off like like you know rarely ever do people ever start like that and then just like climb straight to the mountaintop. Yeah, right. Like a straight shot. It's never a straight shot, especially like for there's maybe like point zero zero one percent of people who have that straight shot that make it look so effortless and so clean that they have like all these like wonderful connections and usually. Usually that's like, that's like a very slim margin. You should never compare yourself to that, but rather like, I think what truly defines, I guess, your journey and your, um, your trajectory is rather how you actually, uh, process and also like move forward from setbacks. Right. So like I could plan for everything, right. I could plan for all these different shoes. I could plan for like this marketing, uh, campaign that I got going on. Right. But if it doesn't go according to plan, right as like the papers or the analysts yeah. say, you know, then what are you going to do then? You're just going to sit in a corner and cry or are you actually going to like, you know, embrace it and just be like, okay, well, this is what we can do afterwards, right? If it doesn't go like this, then we can actually pivot towards that, right? And so I think that's truly what what defines, defines I guess, entrepreneurs or like people who are trying to do something cool in this world of like setbacks, right? So um, that's just kind of like what I stand on. No, I like that. <clears throat> like I said, I, it 
it's very on brand with who you are as a person because it's you know as we said when you're arrogant i feel like it the, things don't tend to go your way you're just not you're not open to pivoting. I'll, I'll say this too, but also like there's a sweet balance between arrogance and like the willingness to bend for, to everybody's like, you know. I opinions. think we spoke about this. Oh, this was in, this was before the coffee thing. I think you asked me, "What do you think about people with egos?" Right. I think you asked me that one time. Probably, yeah. I definitely did. <laughs> you you always you know what's the one thing I noticed is you whenever we see each other you. There's always like one question that you kind of throw at me. <laughs> I don't see it coming mm. where I'm just like, I look at you and I'm like, what made you think of that question? But I like it. And I, I think what I told you is, uh, depending on how big of an ego that person has, it's either good or bad because mm. ego, ego is basically just confidence because somebody's, if you have a high, you know, a big ego, it's because you're overly confident about right. who you are. Right. So I think it's it's a matter of how much level of confidence do you have and how you introduce that confidence to mm -hmm. other people. I think that's where, you know, confidence is a positive, ego is a negative, but they're essentially the same thing. Right. So to your point, <clears throat> there does need to be a healthy amount of ego slash confidence. Right. Because you have to be comfortable and, and confident in your product. Because if, if you made your shirt and you didn't like it, why should other people like it? Exactly. No, uh, and th that, that's a great point actually. Like if you, if you do not like what you are doing or what you're putting out of the service that you're doing and you think that it could be better, I mean, anything could be better. But, like, if you're not comfortable with what you are putting out, um, why even try to provide, why even try to sell this to somebody? Yeah. Or why even try to, like, do anything with it? Rather, you know, if you're not comfortable with what you're putting out, then, you know, people people will pick that up. Yeah. They 100% do. Is, is, the, is the manga line out? That's it's not out yet. The manga right? club is out actually now. It actually just like launched, like officially launched to non members um, a couple of days ago, actually. Yeah, we're just getting we're getting a lot of orders actually. So really? Yeah, actually like more than more than I expected. Oh wow. Yeah. Do you <clears throat> do you keep track of like um like the analytics of everything? Like how, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the question? The numbers, the ins and outs, yeah, the, the, like ins the profit loss type thing. Yeah, kind I of do. like, you know, did we make, did we, did the shirt sell out quicker last launch compared to this launch? When did it start selling out? Things like that. I mean, technically, I don't even, I don't even have enough inventory to even meet the demand that we currently have right now. So that's a, that's a great problem to have. Yeah, that is a so. great problem. Yeah, so I'm dude, like, like, like I literally wake up, wake up like the past couple of days. I'm like, dude, like I, I gotta order more. I gotta <laughs> order more. Like, dude, this 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 is a great problem to have. That is. Have yeah. you? But have you ran into this problem before? In the past, actually, I have like a couple of times, especially like when we first made that transition to t-shirts, right? Um, especially like when we had our first like blockbuster like design. It was the friendly punch, right? That was a shirt that I felt like, especially that 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 prematurely launched in our our first Euphoria, and my God, we had like lines like wrapped around our booth. <laughs> That's awesome. like, yo, I, I want that, I want that uh, in in green and a small, and I'm just like running back, running back <laughs> to like the yeah. the bins that we have and like like just swapping everything out because back then it was just me, right? It was just me like just running this entire <clears throat> booth in operation. I again. got a I got a little taste of that in the winter. Yeah. Euphoria when I helped you out with your booth a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, and that wasn't even like super busy. Uh that was kind of just super casual. And I was like, how does he do this, dude? And I'm like looking for the shirt. Yeah. And it's like some somewhere down the line while I'm looking for the shirt and looking through the bins, I'm like, wait, what size did they just ask for? <laughs> and it's like, I can't even imagine being <laughs> under that level of stress 
and then knowing that you have a line pretty much wrapped around that is insane the thing is like because you because i also had taylor with me too and he he came in like a little later on shout out to taylor fucking phenomenal friend dude um he well i i organized the the bins the way that i could go through it so like when you actually step into my booth right and you're trying to like find different um like uh, i guess like designs or like <clears throat> like different t-shirt sizings and whatnot like where's this stack where's that stack you know i know where it is but you're trying to figure out like, where everything else is and then <laughs> yeah. while, while you're trying to figure it out it's like wait what did this person ask for yeah you got to remember the size yeah. the color and the design because you did have multiple designs Yeah, because this is also something that i need to fix too as well as like i use like frosted frosted bags and so it's like very difficult to like see like what's actually like in in there yeah uh, and so unless like you're like literally like pushing the bag against the the t-shirt and it's like oh that's what it is i went through like i never told you but when i was i think when i was looking for one of the shirts i was in such pressure I was like, why did I even say I could help? I don't even know where anything is at. And I'm like, uh, I'm like simming through everything. And you're like, it's it's a brown one. It's right there. And I'm just like, when you're <laughs> when you're stressed, when you're when you feel stressed and you get a simple command like, oh, it's right there on the left, mm -hmm. it's like you lose all sense of direction. You were like left. I was like, what's left? What's left? <laughs> you like forget your name. Oh, dude, yeah. It was just I couldn't uh, but I mean, to your point, you you have a set system for yourself where you you could have probably found the shirt right way quicker. No, I think it's also like you know this this is no knock this is no knock. It's just one of those things like you just jumped into this like as a friend, yeah. Right, you jumped into this as a friend, not knowing what, what it came with, and then it's like <laughs> oh, sh like dude, what's going on? And I was freaking it, out. Yeah, no, that's, that's the thing. Like, dude, the thing is like, shout out to you, dude. You helped you helped out honestly. <laughs> For a little bit, because after, like, I think after a while, I was like, I need to get the fuck out of here. I feel like I'm, I was like, I feel like I'm slowing things down more with me being here than if I just wasn't here at all. You also happened to come in at, like, a very high tide time. Like, I, so. It just, it was out of nowhere, because we were just shooting the shit, and then, like, before we know it, there's, like, a mini line. Yeah. And I'm like, where do these people come from? <laughs> yeah, dude, like, dude, shout out to the customers, shout out to the the folks that've been that've been shopping with us for like a long time, dude. Like, you're you're the reason why why we still continue doing this. So, like, they, they come like in in waves, yeah, right. So it's like one of those things you just happen to catch like the very high tide time of that that event. It was so. It was. Uh, I don't think I'll ever do that again. <laughs> Maybe I'll just bag the items for you next time, <laughs> dude. Anything is help. Yeah, but it was it was nice. It was just nice uh, providing a helping hand, dude. Plus, plus, it's just thank you for even giving me like just like just a moment away just to like just walk around and. Oh yeah, when I took you. In yeah, your, yeah. It Taylor Taylor kind of manned the booth and yeah, I'm he just did. like oh yeah just this is I actually have legs I can actually move I can actually go talk. Yeah. yeah, I'm not, I'm not shackled and chained <clears throat> to this booth. You yeah, know, because the first time I saw you, which was the first, like I said, first time I met you first for you, the only time I saw you out of your booth was when you did the panel, and then you were just at your booth. Yeah, and it's like you gotta enjoy enjoy the market, you know, dude. Like I, I get you come there for work, but yeah, dude. Honestly, I wish, I wish I was like a customer, just like just scrolling around like through Euphoria and like being able to buy like vintage stuff and being able to buy like cool unique items um this is like such a such a cool market and again shout out to fabrizio and in that whole entire his whole entire team dude like they they honestly put on a miraculous show yeah they always do um, they do a yeah. wonderful job like vetting vendors and you know having like a good blend of what they think people want so like they they he does an amazing job him and his team do and it curates a very cool experience honestly yeah. I think <clears throat> the way that everything is just structured with Euphoria Market, it's it it's damn near perfect. Like it's just it's they it's done so nicely, and the fact that you know people do come there and you know they're they're not just throwing their clothes. You know they create an experience within their own little thing, where it's like every vendor is a different world. In, in, in essence right exactly i think you know i don't want to speak speak for fabricio but I also uh, from what he's he's been at least foreshadowing is he definitely wants something like close to along the lines of like complex con 
Like yeah. where there's like a very select few like vendors and like they they truly like really like make their impression. Like they basically like build like a room like the one that we're in and they have like I don't know like grass walls and like you know wooden floor panels and they it's basically just like a walk through a. Tr- like, I mean, have you seen? <clears throat> Have you seen what Vandy's been doing at the complex cons? Oh, absolutely no. It's it's the pretty it's pretty sick. I, I see like snapshots <laughs> of it like on Instagram from time to time. I'm like, dude, this guy's on the next level. This guy's on some next it's, wave stuff. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But um, Dan, <sighs> we've come to an end. Mm. It we've come to an end. Oh man, out here. I know it. Time flies by when you're just shooting the shit, dude. No way. I sw- we already hit an hour. Oh yeah. shoot. Yeah, we hit an hour. Dude. Th- th- you here. didn't even feel like it, right? Dude, I thought we were going like for two or three. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's it. You don't like the time flies by, and I think, like I said, it's because we, we could just talk for days, right? But um, we're gonna maybe you you make a return. You know, I mean, I said that to everybody, but like, I mean yeah. it. Like, if you ever want to come back, sit on that seat and that couch. Yeah, by all means. I'll be more than happy to come back. Honestly, like I feel like we've we, again. I feel like even within an hour, I feel like we've rarely scratched the surface. I know, I know, and <clears throat> like we t- we said a lot and then didn't say enough. All right, that, that's agree. how it feels like. But um, it's been amazing to have you. I knew it was gonna go swimmingly well, just because mm. our our con- you know our connection, right? Our vibe. But um, thank you for sharing everything that you shared with us today. Your Japan trip, the way you think, the way you process things. Yeah. I think this is a nice look into the, you know, the creator behind Orange Peel because not a lot of people know. Unless people know you personally or they've gone to events, they don't know who's behind Orange Peel. And I think Mm. this is kind of like a nice introduction to who you are as a person behind Orange Peel. There's many layers there, but I agree, yeah. (laughs) There is. There is. Like you said, we we did scratch the surface, so maybe you know, we should have another one. Absolutely, maybe say something like about like the creative process or like how things are done, or I guess w- whatever you'd like to touch on as well too. So, okay. whatever you want your audience to think or want to. Know. I think, <clears throat> yeah, I th- I think we'll we'll leave anticipation. Sounds good. <laughs> I like that. No, thank you, Dan, for being on. Um, where can they where can they find your uh, orange peel line? Uh, orangepeelapparel dot com. You can also follow us at on Instagram at orangepeelapparel, um, TikTok orangepeelapparel. People call Twitter X X Twitter. I think X. it's like I think people use both. We're we're not too active there, but. <laughs> Well, still shout it out. Orange peel like underscore gear. Someone took orange peel apparel, or there's not enough like characters to have that handle on oh, Twitter. Oh wow! Yeah, <clears throat> um, yeah, and just stay, stay fresh. Stay f- like that. Thank you, everybody, for watching another episode of Todo Tranquilo. Again, thank you, Dan. Thank you for blessing my my set. <laughs> Dude, it's a privilege to be here <laughs> with honestly. your presence. Um, you can find. Todo Tranquilo on Apple Podcast, Spotify. You can see our beautiful faces on YouTube.